Hello, welcome to Your Pets Pal. I'm April Hollis, PIO from Maricopa County Animal Care and Control. We have a very interesting topic today. We're going to talk about protecting yourself from dog bites. And it's very important because we probably take about 5,000 reports every year through our call center just on dog bites alone. And the numbers really do not need to be that high. So today I have a couple of wonderful people with me. We have Al, who is our field manager for animal care and control, and we have Carrie, who is an animal trainer. And before we get started, what I always like to do is have basically each of you to tell us a little bit what you do and about yourself. So Al, you're gonna be up first. Well, I'm the division manager for animal care and control. I've been doing this business for about 22 years. My primary work is oversight of the enforcement officers, the guys that work the streets, drive around and take the bite reports and pick up stray dogs. That's it in a nutshell. Carrie, hi, thanks for hi. coming. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm basically done dog training for probably close to six years now. In the last couple of years, I've gotten into more of the behavioral stuff of it. Um, we take in all the animals for one of our rescue groups that have issues. We take them from the pound, we take them from people. Yeah. Like Abby here, who like was chewing Abby. on her feet. <laughs> Abby's got a little bit of some skin issues. So, but um, she came from the West Shelter, I believe, right? Correct. She actually was on the euthanasia list, and you guys rescued her. <laughs> and you know, she's just gonna chew on her feet a little bit, it's okay. okay. And you rescued her and worked with her a little bit. And we'll actually talk about that a little while down the road too, so we can kind of learn from Abby a little bit. So let's just get right into this, if you guys don't mind. So Al, I, why do dogs bite? Well, there are num numerous, numerous reasons why they bite, but one of the primary reasons is people enter the dog's territory, mm -hmm. whether it's on their own front yard, in their house, or while we're, they're with their dog owner and they approach a dog that they're unfamiliar with. So it's that entering their space yeah. and also invading the space of the dog owner, and the dog gets defensive. That's the primary reason. And the majority of bites, the dog knows the person or is acquainted with them. Okay. What are some other reasons that they bite? Um, some breeds like to chase, yeah. so uh -huh. it's instinctive <laughs> for them to chase someone on a skateboard or a bicycle, and the dog may get out occasionally, and it's just instinctive for them to chase and nip, and that's a form of, of communication for them. Yeah. What about um, like mother dogs and? Mother dogs are very protective. That's another thing when they're the puppies, yeah. like a mama bear. If you yeah. enter the property where they have puppies, the mom is going to be protective and they're going to protect their pups. So it's really a message. Mm -hmm. And they'll usually give you other signs like a growl yeah, or raise their hair and say, hey, they're yeah. going to give you a warning. And the primary reason why people get bit is they don't pay attention to the signals the dog gives them. Exactly. Now, what about kids? There are a high number of dog bites to kids. What are some of the reasons for those? Would you like to? Kids normally don't pay attention to the signs mm -hmm. because unless we teach them, you know, as an adults, teach the children uh, the signs to look out for, they're going to get bit. Um, pulling tails, pulling ears, mm -hmm. getting into their dog dishes, um, things like that, trying to take away bones. Um, those are pretty high rates Jumping of things. Jumping on them while yeah. they're sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that type of stuff, yeah. And the bites to the kids are even worse because the kids, you know, their face is closer to the face level of the dog, whereas a lot of bites to adults are on the legs or their arms. But those kids, I mean, they're right there on the face. So I think that it's even more important to teach them. And maybe we can talk that about, about that a little bit more too, to kind of teach what we can teach the kids so they don't get bit. Because it's so scary too. A dog bite in general is scary, but then when it happens to a child, oh, it's so much worse. So, you know, we mentioned earlier that 5,000 reports are taken a year through the county shelter. Um, so what exactly, what are the pro, what, are the, what are the steps? What does MCACC do when we basically get somebody that calls that says, oh my gosh, I just got bit by a dog? First of all, every bite is, by law, is re required to be reported mm -hmm. to our agency. Okay. So we investigate and log every bite, keep track of them for public health. The, the process, if you were to get bit by a dog, you may go to the hospital. The doctor's required to report it, so it comes to our call center. They'll assign it a case number. Mm -hmm. An officer will go out to make sure that the dog is licensed and vaccinated. More importantly, li or vaccinated. Yeah. If the dog is vaccinated and licensed, uh, and depending on the circumstances of the bite, the dog may qualify to be home quarantined. But if the other components aren't in place with the rabies shot, mm -hmm. a license, and if the dog was at large running loose and it was an aggressive, unprovoked bite, the dog will have to go either to a veterinarian's office for quarantine or to the shelter. And how long is a quarantine? It's a 10 days, 10 days from the date of the bite. Okay. And after that, a health check is conducted. 
and it will be released from, from quarantine at that point. And if the dog is quarantined at the shelter, at the veterinarian office, there's fees associated with that, correct? Right, there's, all the veterinarians have their own fees involved, mm -hmm. but there's daily board, there's the impound fee, the daily board, and then if it's not licensed and vaccinated, that has to take place before it's released. And with the new law about spay and neutering, mm -hmm. that dog would have to be spayed or neutered more. before mm -hmm. it leaves. Yeah. So it just goes to show it's one more good reason why you should vaccinate your dog against rabies and license them. Correct. Because if for whatever reason they do bite and it could be an accident, doesn't mean your dog is aggressive, but that way it's going to save you some money because it can be quarantined at home. Correct. Now, if the dog is at large running mm -hmm. loose and it's a unprovoked bite, there may be citations issued for the dog running at large. Okay. So there's even more fees involved. Cool. So another good reason to keep your dog at home or on a leash. Right. <laughs> um, so what exactly is the law regarding dog bites? Well, besides the dog, all bites have to be reported. Okay. Um, the dogs have to be quarantined. Mm -hmm. Dogs have to be licensed. Mm -hmm. And if the dog cannot run at large, and has to be under control, mm -hmm. either by a leash no longer than six foot mm -hmm. in length or confined to okay. the property. So say my dog bites my neighbor and my neighbor is very angry and wants my dog to be put down. That doesn't happen. If in order for, I mean, we don't put dogs down mm -hmm. for biting. That's not the process. If someone wants to file a petition for vicious mm -hmm. because the dog was aggressive, intimidating, and it's a public safety issue, mm -hmm. the citizen can file at the courts a petition to, for a vicious hearing. Okay. And only a judge or magistrate can can order a dog to be euthanized but typically a judge will put other things in place um, insurance umbrella of mm -hmm. 100 to 300 thousand dollars that the dog be spayed and neutered mm -hmm. that it be muzzled when it's out in public or confined at that property at all times okay and I just wanted to mention that because a lot of people think oh my goodness if my dog bit somebody I don't want to tell because if it goes to animal care and control it is not coming back to me that's yeah, that, very that's, that's, rarely the case that's an old belief okay. back in the dark ages <laughs> when rabies shots were not mm -hmm. available they would have to test a dog to make sure that it didn't have rabies and the only way to do that is to take a sample from the brain mm -hmm. so in the old days a dog would be euthanized and sent to the state lab for testing okay. we no longer do that we now put it under observation for the 10-day period okay. now all this is regarding dogs biting people what about if a dog bites another dog or another pet and again, the circumstances of the bite, if the, uh, if the dog is at large, what are the circumstances if they're in a dog park? Mm -hmm. We evaluate all those, those components. But if it's a dog-on-dog -dog attack, mm -hmm. depending on the, the local ordinance, there may not be a law that is broken unless the dog is loose. Okay, now, because aren't some cities, there are, was it a state, that a new law that kind of got started, basically dogs attacking other dogs, like helps with like the vicious dog filing? There's a or? new aggressive dog okay. and vicious dog ordinance. It's just brand new since July. Okay. And if a dog does attack another animal, mm -hmm. they're in violation of the aggressive dog okay. law. Okay. And citations would be issued, but not does not have to go under quarantine. Okay. Great. Thank you for the information. It's a lot of information. Um, so I'd like to get back. Now we got all the important stuff, all the important stuff. Let's talk about and go back and talk about signs. What are some things, Carrie, Al, that we can look out for about what, you know, so we know whether a dog is, you know, angry or getting upset about something and so we can read the signs so it doesn't elevate to that level of bite. Um, body language. Okay. Body language in an animal. Um, the, the eyes will, you can see the whites of the eyes, mm -hmm. um, the ears go back, the hair goes up, uh, posture, they, they stop and they just stare. Um, some animals you just don't even know. Mm -hmm. It can be just like that. But mainly um, if owners are in tune to their animal and what they do and kind of watch their body language, then a lot of times you can catch, mm -hmm. catch it before it happens. Like I know there's, uh, if one of you can explain a little more, I know there's a lot like just like tails, where the tails are. Can you explain some of that? Anyone? <laughs> uh, well, it depends on the, I think it depends on the breed. Okay. Um, like, like say a husky who has the tail that goes around all the uh -huh. time. It's hard to tell if they're in that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a dog whose tail's always down and of course they bring it up, then yes, of course you can tell okay. that that's a sign. But it just depends on the breed. Okay. Mainly the, the hair on the back is one of the yeah. number ones. It's the hackles, right? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, my dog's hackles rise just when the mailman comes over <laughs> <laughs> for barking. So, and the only reason I asked for a little more detail is because I think that's a tough one, especially if you don't know a dog or the dog isn't with their owners and you see a dog, how, you know, how do you know? I guess really, and I really want to try to help educate people more about the signs that they can be on the lookout for. And so maybe, um, for instance, if you are out for a walk and you come across a dog, you know, on the other side of the street, just what are some things to be aware of when you see that dog? Well, your own body language and mm -hmm. the posturing of the dog, paying attention to what the dog is doing. Is the dog that's normally out, a stray dog that gets out on a normal, at an, uh, on a regular basis, mm -hmm has marked his territory. So you may be entering the dog's territory that's expanded because he's out on a regular basis. So paying attention to the dog's behavior, is he paying attention to you? If he's looking the other way, typically there's not mm -hmm. an issue to, to deal with. But a lot of times the dog, once you get closer and he protects his property, okay. he'll give you some signals. He'll, yep. His flag will go up his tail. Mm -hmm. He will alert, typically he'll bark. And if you're on his property, a lot of times a dog will just charge without any notification at all and bite. <laughs> protecting his land, yeah. Right. Now, so what are, some thing, um, what are some things as a person you should not do when you're walking to ensure that you stay safe if you do come upon a strange dog that might be acting? The main thing is never, ever, ever run. Why? Mm -hmm. The dog will take chase and then he's in a position to bite you. Okay. Um, yeah. Posturing and usually giving a voice command mm -hmm. will we'll slow down the dog. I would say 90% of the time, a dog, if you would face off to him and give him a direct mm -hmm. um, bark yourself to say, sit, stay, or go <laughs> mm -hmm. home, the dog will pay attention okay. to that. Mm, sometimes that's not so true, though. <laughs> I think it has to do with your energy. Yeah. The calmer you are, the better. Oh, no, if you scream no at a dog, what, what good is that? That's, a, that's yeah. what my main thing is, because for so many people, if you see a dog coming running at you, yeah, you want to turn and try to run away. And it's so hard to fight that natural instinct to flee. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, you want to try to be calm. What else? Um, I usually give a side posture because if you stare a dog directly in the face and you show them your eyes or your teeth, mm -hmm. they're going to think that that's a fight. Okay. That's just what they do in the dog mm -hmm. world. Um, best thing to do is remain calm and kind of give them either a side posture to where you can still kind of look at them. Mm -hmm. And you, you, that way they don't see you as very... as and as intimidated. <laughs> Screaming, yelling, good or bad? <coughs> mm, not so good. <laughs> Unless they're attacking you, then mm -hmm. you can start screaming. Yeah. Right, it's exactly when the dog is charging. At that point, that's where you have to. Okay, so say a dog does attack you. What do you do? Well, I guess it just depends on the situation. Um, if a dog is attacking you or your dog, you want to try to protect your animal, of course, because mm -hmm. you don't want them hurt. <laughs> As as humans, we can we can take more pain than they can. Mm -hmm. um, you can carry mace, pepper spray. Um, mainly, if you just kind of watch what their energy is, mm -hmm. you can kind of kind of go by that. Yeah. I just I just feel that being a calm, assertive person, mm -hmm. that the more calmer you are, the better it is. Um, but yeah, if an animal's attacking you. But it's you, hard to do. If some it animal is, when you get is in that situation you and already yeah. attacking you. I know we used to a lot, we used to do a lot of um, trainings with like um, public works people, post, you know, the post delivery people and all that. And what are some things that we used to tell them? Because so if a dog is coming up to them and charging at them, what are some maneuvers that they can do? Well, it's about knowing your environment, first okay. of all. Do an assessment of the area that you're in. If mm -hmm. you're a postal worker, or a public works individual, it's taking an assessment of the environment that you're in. So it's mm -hmm. anticipating that there may be a dog in the area. And if you're going to enter a dog's property, it's alerting that you're there. No surprises. Yeah. Um, that often will just alert the dog so he's not surprised. You don't startle him and he responds to that. That's one of the main ways to protect yourself. Okay. The other thing, like she said, to side posture, not giving direct eye contact, mm -hmm. that is a challenge to the dog. But if you're um, in a dog's space, it's very important to make sure that there are no surprises and then if he comes up to you, the first thing you do is put your arms down, yep. act like a tree. Mm -hmm. We tell kids, look at your shoestrings, act yeah. at, like your tree roots. It's completely still, completely quiet. Many times the dog will bark, bark, bark and then walk away. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a little more specifically about dogs, own dogs. So say I have a dog and well, my dog is Walter and he's a 10 year old lab and he's not aggressive at all, but say he is, say he's got some tendencies towards aggression. What are some things that you as a trainer would suggest that we could do to work on that? 
Um, well, the best thing you could do is hire a, be a behaviorist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, but what would you work with the dog on? What would you? Um, you would figure out what it is that's triggering that and work with that. So say if it's um, putting hands in the food bowl mm -hmm. and he doesn't like that and he goes after the hands, you're going to, of course, want to work on that by giving him, feeding him with your hands. Okay. And if he gets too mouthy or gentle, you just take it away and tell him no and then it, tell him gentle and, and then t once he gets that then you start a bit, a, going into the food bowl with it uh -huh. a little bit in the food okay. and kind of keeping your hand there um, things like that what this, if my um, dog is growls and lunges anytime somebody new comes around it's mainly up to you as the pet owner to make sure that your animals in control mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. If you know that your animal is going to be that type of person, that type of animal to do to people, mm -hmm. you need to stop it before it happens. Are there things we can work on with them for that to stop? Correct. Um, the best thing to do is have them on a leash, mm -hmm. a short leash, or a leash that you can make sure that you have control of it. Once they start to lunge, you give them that good pull mm -hmm. down and tell them, leave it. Um, best thing to do is tell that person to totally avoid that per the dog. Okay. Don't even act like it's there. Okay. Um, what else? What are some other aggression issues that a dog might have that would need work on? Out for walks, biting, other, trying to go after other dogs. Um, yeah, can you train, change the behavior of the dog, and I know it's their owner as well, so that stops happening? Is there something you can do? Yeah, I mean, it, and it all goes back to the owners. The owners have to work with the animals. Okay. Um, if the owner's not going to work with the animals, of course it's not going to change the behavior. That's true, because you know you can take a dog to training and training and training. If the owner is scared and nervous, what what's what's advice you have for the owner of an, an aggressive animal and who just can't settle down to try to help rehabilitate their dog? Um, the best thing to do is calm energy. You got to remember that. How do the you best, get to that? <laughs> how do you get people. to that? Yeah, that's the hard <laughs> that's part. The trick. How do you get? How do they get to that? It takes time, and it's not an overnight fix. Mm -hmm. It takes time, and you got to be consistent with it. Um, the more consistent you are, the better the dog's going to learn. Okay. What about if you were, say my dog is an aggressive dog and he can lunge and bark, and, but I want to take him on walks because I've heard <laughs> that the more I exercise my dog, most likely the calmer he's going to be. What do I do so I can take him on a walk safely? Um, as f there's a few things you can do. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of devices out there for you to use and all kinds of methods to use. Um, muzzles, mm -hmm. electronic collars. My preference is the gentle leader because okay. of the fact that the when it's on the it head, it moves around the nose, around the nose mm -hmm. and around the back of the head, it works like a horse halter. You have control of that head, complete control. Mm -hmm. So if your animal is going to lunge at somebody and you give them a, a yank on that gentle leader and hold it, you have control, okay. not the animal. That's my preference for any type of bad behaviors. Mm -hmm. And it's more out. gentle versus like the, the choke collars and all that. The prong collars. The prongs that dig into their necks. Do those yeah. still work though? I mean, for some people, what if they, they say do. that's all I can do? As long as they're used properly. Okay. And that's just it. They need to find somebody to train them how to properly use it. A lot of people will just go to the stores and buy these things and, and think, oh, I can use this and just choke them or, or you do the button when you, you push on the electronic collar. You got to do it at the right timing. That's okay. the best thing to do. So Abby is over here sleeping away. She's obviously <laughs> quite the star. And I just wanted to talk about her briefly because I know she came from the West Shelter. Correct. And unfortunately, she was on our euthanasia list for a couple of op things. Can you kind of explain her story to us? Um, oh, you have to wake up now. <laughs> Abby. Oh, she's out cold. Look at her. She, like, was, <laughs> she was on the euthanasia list. Um, she had uh, illnesses, which was her ears were very badly infected <laughs> she had oh some skin goodness. issues that um, is a rub my belly pose <laughs> <laughs> um she had some skin issues um <laughs> when uh, we took her up to the vet we felt in a bunch of the little cockaburs and stuff like that embedded oh, into yeah. her i mean all over her skin so we we shaved her down oh my, she is showing off <laughs> She had actually a little, she still actually has a little um, soreness right here in the chest, but okay. it's just a little one that's still, we're constantly uh, taking care of. But she uh, went to a different foster home for about a couple weeks, 
and during that time when she was um, having the ear itch, uh, situation, she wasn't feeling good. Mm -hmm. So apparently the other foster was feeding Abby and their dog at the same time. We are guessing we don't know exactly what happened because they walked out of the room, but she attacked their dog and she had to get stitches. Oh. So then she came to our house for us to rehab her and she's now in our home with 20 something dogs. Oh my. She's wow. part okay. of the pack. Good. You so know? what did you do for her rehabilitation? Um, time outs, working with her, making her be calm and submissive mm -hmm. as the other dogs would meet her. Um, anytime that we see that she, any dog that tries to get a little, you know, hair up or whatever, mm -hmm. we give them what we call a bite, which is just a, a hand thing yeah. to the arm or to the shoulder. <coughs> and we just remain calm. And, and normally most dogs will start to learn it real quick. Okay. But she's learned a lot. She's... This is how she is at home now. <laughs> <laughs> she could not be more calm. She, um, and so what is her plan? What is her future plan? Well, she's up for adoption with the rescue group we're with. Um, hopefully we'll find her a home. <laughs> and how old do we think she is? The vet's guessing between five to seven. Okay. So she's got a lot of life left in her. Yeah, she does. And obviously she loves belly rubs. I think it's killing <laughs> her. She's like, why is nobody rubbing my belly? I'm here for you. <laughs> Abby. It, it's almost like she's fallen asleep that way. So, <laughs> I'm so distracted. So Abby's a good, she's a good story because, you know, she's a story that just because a dog acts aggressive doesn't mean, you know, that's it for them. They can exactly. change, they can be good dogs, you just really need to work with them. Exactly. Now, we kind of mentioned earlier that, you know, a lot of the bites that happen to her to kids, to children. And so, I, is there like certain training that kids can learn about um, basically how, how to better act around animals or what kinds of things would we teach them to tell them to do? Um, you kind of mentioned it earlier, but I want to go yeah. over it because I think it's really important. Well, well, I have a 12 year old daughter and she's, we've been doing uh, rescue for almost six years now. And so she's learned a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and the main thing that we need to remind her every day is because she is a kid, she's got that energy. She likes to run around and be crazy and she loves the animals is the energy she projects is what they're gonna feel. And so they get crazy. So okay. um, calm energy, so energy uh -huh. remind them to stay calm, remind them if they're gonna be having fun and playing, maybe if they know the animal has an abiding or aggression mm -hmm. issue to either remove the animal or have the kids go to a different area. Um, but there are things that you can you can teach them. I mean, mm -hmm. you can teach them to watch for the signs. She <laughs> she knows the signs a little bit better than I do because, of course, she's smaller to the ground, yeah. um, things like that. But she's learned a lot, and I just I feel that any good dog owner mm -hmm. is going to want to train their animals to be consistent with the training, mm -hmm. so that way their animals don't wind up at the shelter. Okay, so uh, as far as kids go. Um, should <coughs> children be left alone with dogs? Nope. I would say no. no. Okay. Never unsupervised. No. Nope. Okay. Particularly strange dogs. But even uh, more, no matter how good of a dog normally is, right? Because you never right. know when they can turn. Right. Particularly younger children, yeah. toddlers, okay. should never be unsupervised. Correct. Okay. Um, once they get a little older, trying to teach kids not, kids not to approach strange dogs, okay. particularly in park areas mm -hmm. or on the street. Okay. Kids are just drawn to pets and they want to pet them and you just never know what so the reaction will be. A dog asking. that you don't know, yes. ask the owner, is it okay if I pet your dog? Right. What about um, when the dog is sleeping? Leave him alone? Try to wake him up? Um, it's <laughs> best to here. say a name or uh -huh. hey you or whistle. Okay. Get their attention before you touch them. Yeah. What kind of games would you suggest kids play with dogs and you know what shouldn't they play? Uh, what shouldn't they play? Tug of war is a bad one because okay. it's teaching the dog to be dominant. Uh -huh. Um, if they have a bone, never let them take the bones away. Mm -hmm. um, wrestling. Wrestling can be bad. And kids, especially little boys, yeah. we, they like to wrestle they and do. you're going to wrestle with their dogs too. And a lot of times for the dogs, it's hard to know when to stop when they get to that point. Good, good, good. Um, Some of the other things is just chase. Mm -hmm. Dogs oh, like yeah. to chase and kids like to play around and mm -hmm. chase. And what we found that it's usually another child that's visiting that yes. takes chase, and that's the child that typically may get bit, because the dog may go into chase mode and also protection mode, thinking mm -hmm. that that person or that other child is, is going to harm part of his pack. Yeah. So usually the visiting child has to be monitored a little more, uh, okay. just to make sure that they don't do anything to arouse 
uh, this, or stimulate a dog into a protection mode. And there is a ton of websites that I know people can get more information. I want to say uh, Dog Gone Safe, I think, is a really popular great, one that has a lot site. of good kid stuff. Um, if people need behavior issues, I don't think you ever mentioned. You're, you're a trainer. Do you have a website or something like that? Um, I don't have a website, but mainly we do a lot of our training for the rescue group that we're with, which is Valley Dogs Rescue. Okay. Um, my husband and I do a lot of the training and the behavioral stuff. Okay. We get the hard cases. <laughs> okay, well, that, that's, you know, obviously that's, it's a good resource to have because you don't need to completely give up on your dog and turn it into the shelter. If a dog that has come in that has bit somebody and say even it was an owner surrender, what are the likelihood, what's the chances of that dog getting adopted? Is well, it safe it, for that to happen? It can be safe. I mean, it's evaluated. It's given another temperament test. Okay. And we always look at the circumstances of the bite. Okay. If the dog bit while someone is taking food from, mm -hmm. or if it's a playful bite, those things are taken into consideration. Okay. If it's an aggressive bite, and depending on where the dog bites is also a sign of how okay. aggressive the dog may be. Typically a bite to the hand or the mm -hmm. foot, those aren't so alarming, but still serious. Okay. But a face bite to an adult mm -hmm. or in the trunk area typically is a sign that the dog was showing some serious dominance and aggression. Okay. Um, you know what I didn't ask you earlier that I wanted to ask because people say it all the time. So what are the top breeds that normally, I mean, what are the most breeds get, that get reported for biting? Statistically, in, <laughs> I mean, there's a top 10, but I think chihuahuas are probably one of Which the Which a top, lot of people probably don't even think about. But do they, they don't even report because it's, it's a small yeah. bite. Yeah. The, the protection breeds are typically in the top five. Okay. Uh, chow, chow Chows, mm -hmm. German Shepherds, um, Rottweilers, mm -hmm. and a lot of pit bull and pit bull mixes. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the times those are reported because of the severity of the bite. It's and there may be severe, some hospitalization yeah, or yeah. medical aid needed. So those get reported by the okay. hospitals. Mm -hmm. One that is shocking to most is that there are a lot of Labrador and Golden Retriever bites. And not because they're aggressive, but because there are There's so many There's so many of the out animals there. out there, right? Well, and, yeah. and the Retrievers are a mouthy dog. Yeah. And that's one thing people don't really realize when they first get them. Yeah. You've got, uh, we have four Retrievers and, and they are mouthy got to always give them a toy yeah, instead yeah, until of your you arm. Yeah, you teach them, you know, hard yeah. versus soft and yeah. the right things to chew on. Make them great. a soft palate. Great, I, um, I don't know if you're going to find this hard to believe, but we're all almost out of time again. Wow. So that's why I wanted to mention Dog on Save. Our website is pets.maricopa.gov. That where people can go get more information on licensing and vaccinating. We hold vaccination clinics all the time for free. So it's a good way to uh, get caught up with the law and so your dog will actually be vaccinated and it's you know that way if for, god forbid they do bite somebody you know the vaccination can hopefully be at home instead which would be better for them correct so is there anything shortly you'd like to add or i really appreciate you guys coming i think it's absolutely wonderful and um i guess that's all we have thank you so much for joining us and please remember to vaccinate and spay and neuter your pets thank you mm -hmm.